Hello and welcome to part two in the 10 part XAPI and Articulate Storyline tutorial series. Today, we're looking at how you can collect the user's name and email address from an Articulate Storyline course so that we can use that data in an XAPI statement. Now, while we are focusing specifically on XAPI, what we're really doing is using JavaScript to pull data from a storyline variable. So if you do ever plan on extending the capabilities of your storyline courses in other ways, then this you know, foundational JavaScript skill set will be really useful for you down the line. So we're going to start here by diving into Articulate Storyline. And all I did here was create a new file and I saved it as collect name and email dot story. You can call this file whatever you want. But once you have it opened up, go ahead and double click the slide to get into slide view. And I just want to create a really basic form here where we can collect the user's name and email. So let's zoom in. I'm going to go to the insert tab at the top. I'm going to move over here to input and then I'll select the text entry field as my input. I'm going to just draw a box here and now I want to label it. I'm going to go back to the insert tab and enter a text box and we'll enter name. So maybe I'll make this bold and format it a little bit. And I'm going to do the same exact thing for the user's email address. If you're, you know, storyline savvy, you can go ahead and select both of these. So I'm selecting this one, holding it down shift and selecting the next, and then I'm dragging it, holding down shift to keep it aligned and now holding down the control key and then I'll let go and it will actually just create a duplicate for me perfectly aligned. So you can do that. And if not, go ahead and just add these um, elements again. And we want this one to say email. So we, we're good. Let's go ahead and add an insert button now too. So I'll go to insert shape, uh, select the rectangle shape, and we'll just add a nice big submit button, uh, type in submit. and I'll make that bold too. So we have a really basic form here. It doesn't need to look that pretty, but if you are implementing this in a course you are already working with, you can go ahead and um, you know clean this up and style it however you like. But we're gonna move along. So select this first text box and you'll see that it's setting a variable called text entry equal to the typed value. And if you select the email text entry box, it's setting a variable named text entry one to the typed value. So we wanna make these we want to name these variables a little more descriptively. So let's open up the variable manager by selecting this icon over here on the right side of the screen. And instead of text entry, we're going to name this one U name, making the N capital capital. Sorry. So that just stands for username and for text entry one, we'll do the same, just U email. Um, so you can just click right in here or you can just double click the whole thing and it will pull up this little dialog box. But once you're done, select OK. And to just check and make sure that the, you named the right variables the right thing, we'll select this text entry box again. And we see now it's changing the U name variable. And we'll select this one and it's changing the U email variable. So that's looking great. I'm going to go ahead and publish this now so that I can show you how we can use JavaScript to get and set these variables. So I'm going to publish. Um, yep, just my desktop, collect name and email, looking good. And once it's done publishing, I'm going to select view project here. Cool, so now this is open, let's type in my name is Devlin, my email address, I'll just use my Gmail one, and then I'll select submit. This submit button isn't doing anything right now except for taking the focus away from the text entry so that we're sure the variable gets changed. I'm going to select the F12 key now to open up my console. And I'm going to show you how we can access these variables. So Storyline has a, has a pretty cool, um, they have a method available called get player, capitalized exactly like you see here. And what that does is it, it basically gets, it, it does exactly what it says. It gets access to that Storyline course. And then it lets you use a couple of other methods that let you get the value of variables and set variables using JavaScript. So I don't want to have to type this out every time I want to use those methods. So I'm going to create a variable. So I'm going to um, set a new constant called player and I'll set it equal to that get player uh, function right here. So you see how we did that. I'll press enter. 
And now I have access to these other variables, get var and set var. These are methods made available by this by Storyline. So let's say we want to just get what my my name is using JavaScript. So we'll do player dot get var, and then we'll type in the name of the Storyline variable. So you know we it's a lowercase u capital N and then just lowercase for the rest of the word. Make sure it's surrounded by quotes and we'll select enter. And sure enough, it gets the value that I entered over here in this uh, name field. Um, as you can see here, I can change this to something else. Devlin Peck, I'll open back up the console and let's execute that same thing, player.getVar, you name, and now it has my full name. Uh, we can do the same thing with the email. I'll just change you name to you email and sure enough, there's my email address that I entered here. Another cool thing, um, not really necessary for this tutorial, but if you are interested in using JavaScript to um, modify, you know, to extend the capabilities of your storyline courses, you can also set variables. So instead of player.getVar, we're using player.setVar, and the first thing we enter is the variable that we want to set, then we add a comma, and then we can add the the value that we actually want to change it to. So in this case, I'll say I want to change it to just the, to Joe. And when I press enter, watch over here what happens to my name. So I'll select enter and there it goes. It changes my name over here to Joe because that's tied to the storyline variable. So now that you see how that works and how we can use JavaScript to work with these variables, let's open up our XAPI statement.js file that we created in part one of the XAPI um, tutorial series. So this is what you should have here. Um, I want, I do want to point something out really quickly. If you did watch that last video and follow along, I actually changed the verb ID that we used because I was using this registry.tincanapi.com source and we would go over here to verbs and I searched for completed. And then the first one that comes up here is this activity stream URI. Uh, you know, we talked about it in the last video. Well, as it turns out, this resource is pretty old, this, this tincanapi.com resource. And in 2020, there's a better one we should be using. Uh, shout out to Jason Hogg for, for filling me in on this. But we want to use this xapi.vocab.pub website. This is going to have the most up-to-date information about all of these uniform resource identifiers. So just like we use the tab at the top here to go to the verbs page, we're going to hover over browse and go to verbs. And then I search for completed and we see here this verb um, completed indicates that the actor finished or concluded the activity normally. So we want to use this one. This is what we use for e-learning courses. So I just copied that and replaced that old verb with that new one. So if you do have the old uh, URI here, make sure you use this new adlnet.gov one. So from there, we're going to replace the name and email address. Because right now, anytime someone sends this XAPI statement, it's going to say that Devlin completed it and that the email address is devlinpeck at gmail.com. You know, obviously once you get an e-learning course out there on the web, there's gonna be many different people completing it and we wanna know who those people are, which is why we set up this little form in the storyline course. So, how, so now our, our challenge is to get the information from that storyline course into this XAPI statement. And sure enough, we'll first do that by getting the storyline player with that JavaScript that I showed you in the console. Um, if you're familiar with JavaScript, uh, you know, you might, you might also see the VAR keyword. This just says we're creating a variable in JavaScript. But we can also use the constant keyword to say that we're creating an unchanging variable, a constant. So this isn't going to change at any point further in this code. So we're going to use this. It saves the computer a bit of memory and makes our code a bit more efficient. So from there, we're going to create a new variable in JavaScript to hold our user's name. Um, so I'm just going to name this uNameJS, JS for JavaScript, and then we'll get the variable from Storyline. So player.getVar you name, just like we did before. And we can do the same thing with the email address, const you email js equals player.getVar you email. 
So now, when we execute this code, it's going to take whatever the user entered in this name and email field, and it will set the name equal to this uNameJS variable and the email address equal to this uEmailJS variable. So this is great so far. Now we just need to replace it in our code. So instead of making the name this devlin string, we're gonna delete that and make it new name JS. And when you're citing a variable in JavaScript, you don't add quotes around it. So, you know, what this will be now is the value of this you name variable from Storyline. And we'll do the same thing with the email address. The only thing tricky here is that when you're including the mailbox property in XAPI, it needs this mail to colon in front of the email address. So we're gonna leave the mail to colon, we're gonna get rid of the email address, we're gonna hop outside of those quotes, and we're going to just put a plus sign, you email JS. So what all this does is it, you know, it keeps the mail to, and then it will just paste in whatever the user enters in this email box right after the mail to colon. And if this is what your code looks like and you, you, know, you have these three lines of code outside of the XAPI statement object and then you just replace them right here, you, know, you replace the name and replace the email address, then we are good to go. So yeah, if you've made it that far, then we're in good shape here. Um, the next video is where it's going to really get interesting. That's where we're going to start sending XAPI statements to a learning record store. So we're really close. Uh, what we have so far is an XAPI statement that we can tie to an individual, but in the next session, we're going to look at how we can actually start tracking those user actions and getting the data that we want to see. So that's coming soon. Go ahead and subscribe because, again, this is only part two. There's actually eight more of these videos to come. And if you do want to participate live and uh, you know hang out and ask questions, then there are a series of live workshops on my channel on my Crowdcast channel. So you can just Google Devlin Pet Crowdcast and you'll see all of my XAPI tutorials. I hope to see you there. Uh, thanks for watching this one and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.